Thursday morning, 1785 at the Great Hall. A couple other groups will meet there as well. Uh, we took over this year. We sat down with Jan at the very beginning and just asked what we need to do best for our chapter. And she said the chapters in Mississippi are doing a great job because they're doing everything that she tells them. So we just said, okay, tell us what you want us to do and we'll do it. Uh, she said, seriously, when she's starting a new chapter, they tend to listen to uh, what we've asked them to do with BNI, and they follow the structure very well instead of just doing their own thing. So we set out to do that, and uh, we took some lumps initially because some people didn't like it. We took some lumps initially because it was hard to hold people accountable. Uh, we took some lumps initially because we changed location from a place we've been at for a while that a lot of people like. Uh, but through that process, we've seen some growth, and we've seen some great things that have happened. And so uh, it's been a fun experience to go by the book. Our goal is to have all green traffic lights. Our goal is to have $1.7 million in closed business for our chapter, which is a huge step up from our normal. And we want to have 35 members by the end of October uh, from about 27 when we took over at the beginning of the year. Uh, so we're working towards those goals. I'm going to pass over to Shelly to let uh, her tell you a little bit more about how we're going about doing those things. So, less is more, and I really want to talk to you about the progress that we've made specifically over the year. We have lost some members, as David said, some wine when we started ratcheting up and being more focused on holding people <coughs> accountable and really living by the book. We were coachable. I mean, we, we were willing to do what we were told to do. And now I would say that they're all fully engaged or in the process of becoming um, first thing we did is we changed locations in January. It added um, more, we also added more reliable structure to our meetings when we integrated the PowerPoint. So some of this is best up that other chapters were doing and we just conscripted it and made it part of our process. So we used the PowerPoint. Um, also moving venues, we were at the Crescent Club and it was just draining our cash. I mean, we were just begging for money and Pat doesn't like to do that. She doesn't <laughs> sell real estate. She doesn't want to be working for money. So when we moved to the Great Hall, we didn't reduce our quarterly dues, but we started investing more into the membership growth and into promoting our members. And there are two things that I think differentiate us. One of them, we're one of the chapters that has a really nice color brochure for all of our members. And as we finish this quarter, we'll be updating it again. And secondly, the videotaping that's being done, right now, now we have a videographer, so Scott's got some help here, but we're videotaping, which not only puts it on our website and on YouTube, but it gives us an opportunity as fellow members to say, that is a rock star presentation. David, I'm gonna send that to Medtronic. So, you know, it's really differentiated us. Um, we have, we do have a better interview process. And I gotta tell you, you've heard this before. I mean, we had a problem. And we had to address the problem. So a challenge became an opportunity. And you know the Chinese character for chaos and opportunity is the same one. So we, uh, we made some lemonade. Um, by the end of June, I think that we're going to end up with a total of 10 members from the May to June process. Uh, we added target companies in these one of these categories. Commercial insurance, business coach, mentoring software entrepreneur, that's a really unique one. Uh, commercial cleaning, carpet cleaning, security, you know, ABT, videographer and construction contractor. And we have two more whose interviews have been done and they will be installed soon. So, um, you know, CEO Magazine, said, uh, CEO, CEO.com says that shareholder return on investment increases 9% when you have engaged employees. And I will say to you that with BNI, that is the very same thing. Return on investment for not only money, but time and energy and creativity is really paying off for us. Um, let's see. So I wasn't here for the visitor's day. I already had a planned two-week vacation in Florence, and they decided to do it without me. <laughs> So I'm going to turn it over to our growth coordinator who just managed to skate in just in time because I will say that the membership committee, I'm sorry they're not here to, for every single one of them to get the recognition they deserve uh, for what we've done to really tighten up our processes. But this is the guy.
guy. This is the dude. This is the man who really carried the visitors day forward. And so I'm going to turn it over to Mark Rollin, the great communicator. Thank you very much, Shelly. Just <laughs> follow her up. What a deal. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm glad I'm here. And uh, I'm looking around the room for Josh. Josh, thank you very much for giving us the guidance and the tools in order to make it happen. Uh, in our uh, visitors day participation, we had about 13 people do four, 40 letters. You know, we had a few people do 10 or four, you know, but everybody got behind the event and uh, we were gonna have another uh, follow-up big day on June 19th to close these people and to use the brochure as a way of getting them to commit to be in that brochure, you know, and, and start the new quarter off right. Um, I, I, without <coughs> Shelly, Shelly had 10 visitors, she wasn't even there, you know. I mean, we do have some rock stars and we're very fortunate. And, uh, you know, as much as she'd like to say I did, I, I didn't do much but make everybody else do something. Well, Right, do what they're supposed to. Right, right. And, and each of these new members, as they're coming through, I'm really excited because as growth coordinator, I'm going to go to MSP with them and I'm going to see what they're doing and what they're learning and to make sure that they help uh, spread that through the older membership, which I, I'm guilty. I mean, I don't enter my stuff like I should online. I'm going to make a commitment to do that, but they're going to help me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but and we're going to get this done, and we're doing. Oh, fabulous! Uh, so I, I think I'm doing this. <laughs> Is there anything that I haven't said that you would like for me to approach? Yes. I'm saying that y'all are going to have a specific follow-up day. So what are y'all doing on that follow-up day? Okay, on June 19th, we're going to do the, the same thing we did before: expand the room so we have more room for more people. So you're going to invite them back? Is that what you're doing? We're, we're going to invite more people to come to close. We took our list of all the attendees in May, and we said, let's get these people here. What happened was, and this is an amazing thing that nobody talked about before, you start this activity, and people want to join the group because the activity <coughs> is going on. Right. They want to be participants in the visitor's day. So they get on board, you know, they do their letters, you know, it's amazing. It, it's it's uh, activity begets activity, you know. Uh, that, who, and that way it gave us a chance to follow up on those who didn't participate. He said 13 people did 40 letters. We had you know, 27 members at the time. So we now have 31, almost 32 members, and that's going to give those new people a chance to get involved and invite. And also those who didn't in the first place because they had the excuse of time or out of town. a chance to, to kind of pony up and everybody seems interested now because they're seeing the effect that's happening and trying to capture the momentum that we have going into the summer. So did y'all mail letters or did you email them, vice versa, or vice versa, pollination? No. We mailed first, we emailed follow-up, we phone call follow-up, and now the people who didn't close were coming back again and saying, please come back for the follow-up visitor's day. You understand that not everybody came on visitor's day. They couldn't come that particular day but they came a week earlier or a week later then we have contact spheres contacting the people that visited so we have contact information we're handing out to the members of the meeting and say you call this person the member of your contact sphere so that's been a benefit as well is Tupelo here no okay well it's on video thank you very much for motivating us to do this this is what they're doing that is launching the organization. We plan on doing another one uh, in in five months because uh, this was really good and we think that this is the way to do it now, to take it to the next level. And also it took a few of those people who were kind of visiting a couple of times or subbing a couple of times and were interested in joining. We have 30 plus members there and two or three people from their category and it really spurred those people on too. So uh, they, they really helped that a lot. Quite a bit. So if you have a few people hanging in there, I want to join. I'm not sure. Talk about a good way of spurring them on to go ahead and join. It's been a good thing. There's, there's one other thing, and that is, even though this is the first time that we have done a, a blowout visitors day during this fiscal year, every single week as we're teeing up the.
people who are going to be doing their 10 minute presentations, they're in the 10 minute, uh, in the PowerPoint. So they know who's coming up and will say, Josh, who would be a good referral source for you? Who would you like to have invited to the meeting when you're doing your 10 minute presentation? So we're constantly making that part of our process every single week so that they're thinking ahead about who they want. And so we, we're having little mini events that are targeted on the expert of the week. And then every third Thursday, we've had specific focus visits in commercial insurance, electrician. So we've been doing that since October as well. Yeah. One other thing that we've done is because of what Shelly was saying is when we have a, a speaker and they say, well, I'd really like to meet XYZ person but you've got the XYZ person in the chapter. We don't worry about that. We invite them anyway. And uh, I invited an insurance agent to talk to me casually when somebody was speaking. And it turns out she and Lynn McDonald are swapping referrals with each other. And Lynn's the best, best referral she's gotten in me and I because they're giving each other business that they can't handle. And uh, so- like John and others see. <laughs> yeah, it's just that don't hesitate to invite somebody who maybe duplicates. They may not be able to join your chapter, but they might be a good referral source for the other person who does the same thing. There's, there's one more thing that I want to say that just happened yesterday. We had someone visit who is a residential cleaning person. We just had someone join the chapter who is doing residential but wants to move into 100% commercial cleaning. Well, this residential person came and I was a little bit nervous about whether Stephanie would be nervous. I had a one-to-one -one with her yesterday afternoon. She said, I am so excited about this person joining because I really can see where there will be synergy. And that's really the approach that we've taken is we look at people who kind of blur across the lines. It's all about collaboration, not competition. You know, when the tide rises, all the boats are going to go. And when we, when we frame it in a way that they get it, what's in it for them, to be able to split up part of the pie in the BNI chapter, well, then you've got a business coach and a strategic planner and a leadership development person and an HR attorney, all of whom touch some of the same people, but it allows it to be a much stronger uh, B2B team. So I followed up yesterday with guests who were there on Thursday, and one of them was this residential person who came, and I happened to get the owner of the company instead of the rep who was there, and she said, She's in the process of visiting various chapters, and I believe this is the first time she's come to yours. And I said, yes, that's true. And she said, even if she ends up not joining your chapter because another one is more convenient, I want to sit down with Stephanie. I have commercial business that I can refer to her right now. Can you imagine how thrilled Stephanie was to receive my text today saying that? So it's, it's really coming from a place of collaboration as opposed to and that's really important, and don't sit down, David. That, that's really important because sometimes people are afraid to, you know, to bring in somebody who's a quote unquote competitor or someone in the group. There isn't. If you think about it that way, you can't tell what competition or collaboration potential. Don't worry about it. And there's that relationship with that person in the room. You're not going to break that in one visit. You just won't. So don't worry about it and have them you know, not lose any sleep over it either. Some people get panicky over that shouldn't happen if they've got a good relationship. But I want to ask a burning question that might be on your mind and you're afraid to ask. How in the heck do these people have enough time to run their chapter like this? I want what? you guys to answer that. Right? It's on your mind, right? Okay. Let them. Dave is a physical therapist. I know because I go to him and he's busy. Look what I've done so, there. Yeah, look what he does to me. It brings me so. I mean, I own my own practice with a good buddy of mine, Jason Ward, and uh, we work 70 hours a week. Uh, very commonly, I see my first patient at 7.30 in the morning, my last one at 5.30 at night. And uh, so BNI takes up a lot of my evening time. After I go home and play with my kids, I have 11 and a seven year old. Uh, so the investment for me in BNI is part of my work. I take it that way. I also think it's a responsibility uh, outside of my work and when I'm at home. So when I do the PowerPoint on Wednesday nights, the day before Thursday, spend an hour getting those things together. Uh, it just takes time. It's one of those things you have to look at as a uh, marketing tool. I think of it as marketing for my business. I don't invest in other uh, marketing opportunities because word of mouth has been great and I'm uh, needing that for my business. So uh, investing time 
or I would probably invest it in marketing some other ways uh, and spend a lot of time doing that. It's not easy, it does take a commitment, and I think if, uh, like anything else you're committed to, if it's working, you're, you're going to want to do it. So, as long as it keeps working, I think I'll be wanting to do it. So. I'd just like to underscore what they're saying here. Uh, if, if anybody wants to see how a meeting is properly run, go visit with Greater Memphis sometime. I visited them the week before your big visitor day last month, and it was it was just perfect. I mean, the PowerPoint, the order, the, the timing, everything was just one, two, three, A, B, C, and and it, it, was, it was downright impressive. Very good. Well, my come from is a little bit different than David's. First of all, I'm one of those people who was so busy, you know, sometimes I didn't even come to the chapter meeting, and when I was asked to be vice president, you know, I got to see all the ways they let me skate, because they liked me, and they wanted me in the chapter, but all of a sudden, you know, integrity is, is my whole shtick, I mean, that's the name of my book, Integrity-Based Communications, so when I got into the VP role, it's like all of a sudden, I had to understand that I had to walk the talk, and so, I, you know, I'm just true confession time. I am a solo practitioner, and I do have a team that I work with, but for the most part, I could really just kind of get in a hole and do my own thing, and b and is not only an opportunity to focus on working on my business instead of in my business, but I don't have the staff. You know, I go into corporate America and I fix their problems, so to speak, but these are the people that are my trusted advisors. They're not just my marketing team. I mean, they're the people that, that I hang out with that really let me feel connected, and connection is very important to me. So, you know, I'm like David, I make it a priority, and I got two aspects to my marketing strategy. One's a face-to-face, -face and one's an online, and face-to-face -face is BMI. So, I mean, I I want all of my colleagues, to be, we all want to be a product of the product. We all want to grow and become better because we're in BMI, um, and as leaders, we're held to a higher standard. Yeah, we're not above begging and blackmail either. I don't think. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have some good video of yesterday's meeting uh, that we're going to use for blackmail for the next year. So, uh, so y'all be ready for that. Any questions for them? Any other Mark, do you want to say anything about this time? Or? No, I think it's all that's it. Okay. Any other questions for them? Jim? When you tape everything, what are you putting on to the web and to YouTube? Are you putting the whole entire meeting? But you take the whole meeting and then you kind of no, just off. we usually take just the 10 minute expert. But if something really cool is happening, the video is already set up and we captured something yesterday that's not rather priceless. And we'll remain hidden up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have uh, Jim Matrios joined our group, he's a videographer and he does this for professionally, so if there's a member that wants it done professionally, uh, Scott does a wonderful job, thank you very much Scott, that he does microphone and incorporates PowerPoint, spends a bit more time uh, because the member will pay for that, uh, that's a benefit too. Scott does it out of a labor of love, so we appreciate that, good job. And I hope you caught them, when they did their visitor's day, they did break up and they strategically invited the categories that would most benefit the group. They're building intelligently, smart, strategizing. If they're building it like a business, and that's what I'm so proud of them for. It's so nice to work with them because they just really get it. And they're really working and they're they're on the phone with me and they're doing what you know I'm asking them to do. Well you know, and it's just it's working. That's the point. It's not so much they're just doing it. And that's the cool part about it. And it's what I'm most happy about is it's working for them. And they're they're the effort that they're putting into it is going to pay big time in their pockets. Yeah, it's wonderful. Honestly, about three and a half months ago, I was thinking, ah, it's not going to work. We were losing members who weren't committed. We were losing those folks. We had to get rid of a person uh, from our chapter, fire them, if you will. And we had a couple of others after that who joined and then just dropped off the face of the earth. And you're like, what in the world happened? And, uh, those situations happen. Things happen. But, you know, it's separating those who are committed and those who aren't. And that's where we're seeing the growth. That's, what, that's been the fun thing is to see the growth from that. So. so don't be afraid to cut if you need to. You know, that's the lesson. It's just don't be afraid to cut. Josh is their ambassador. One of his ribbons. You got anything else to say?
Yeah. I take credit for everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've only been master for two months, so I've just been really, if I want to have visitors, my jaw drops when I walk in. So. <laughs> you learn more visitors from other chapters. Oh, darn. So. Yeah. That's what got but um, one thing we did in our chapter, we, was it right at the start of this year, we lost a lot of members, but we were, they were the ones that weren't committed. The ones that, that weren't committed, and we saw a, a an increase in our thank you for closed business when we lost four or five members. So just another. Yeah, the whole attitude really changed. Yeah. We lost certain members. So, I know. Yeah. You know, sometimes the comment will come back and we'll say, um, you need to just be firm, draw a line. And we use, just so you know, when I build a new chapter now, Bruce is working on me with this, we have an accountability sheet that comes out right from the start. So if they want to join a chapter, they sign an application, put their money in, they sign it an expectation sheet. This is for building a new chapter. The expectation says they need to be there every week, they have to bring a visitor, and they have to do one-to-ones, they have to do all these things. They sign it on the front end. And then we have, just like the traffic lights for you, we've got it for them. Just because they paid the money does not guarantee them a seat. If they have each week, that we meet. They get green if they're there, a yellow if they have a sub, or a red if they're not. If they have no visitors, they get a red. If they have visitors, they get a five or a two or a one or whatever in green. At the end of four weeks, if they have all red, they're gone. Okay, they're gone. And then after that, when we go into the program where we actually put them into what we call four, which is where I'm getting ready to do in Tupelo next week, they don't invite visitors anymore, and I teach them all about the DNI principles and, and their leadership roles and, and how to do their marketing and all that. That's very intense training that I do for them for six weeks. Then after that, during that time, that accountability sheet is still ticking. They don't do what, they're also gone. And they don't get a refund because they already knew that they were committing to that. And if they don't do it, they're gone because they can go somewhere else. But this starts them out. Um, and it's, just, it's hard for me because I'm a mother hen, so I don't like the red stuff, you know? But what the point is, I've been being mentored, and that's my key to success a lot of times. I've picked good mentors. I've got one now in Florida that um, they consistently average, their average chapter size is 40. So when they start a chapter now, they start at between 20 and 25, that's their core group. They go into this training for six weeks. They have a visitor's day. They consistently get 100 people in the room for their visitor's day, and they double their chapter in a month. That's what I'm trying to get to. So Paula's on the phone with me once and I'm like, Paula, oh, what about this? And you know, she's helping me with this because I really, and she said the first time she did it, it was really hard, and she mothered people. And this is the key that I learned from her. She said she kept on making, you know, somebody would make an excuse. She'd go, that's okay. You know, you didn't do 40 letters. Okay, you'll do it next time. And she kept doing this mothering. And she said when the chapter started, all they did was give her excuses. Constant excuses. We can't do that. We can't do this. Well, what about that? And it was whining the whole time. And she looked in the mirror and said, I did this. I created this whining. And so she said, now I'm a really good chapter starter because I don't take any more whining. If they don't do it, it's just not for them. And that's where we're doing. So this fourth chapter that we're building in Tupelo is totally different than any of the rest of them building. And they also know, they, they have these red, you know, they have this traffic light in front of them every week. Well, I was going to add, you know, one of the things you got to do is dissect the meeting after you have it. Try to make the next meeting better, and I'm referring to visitors. And uh, one of the things I thought about is like, okay, you don't want to participate. Let's figure out a way where they can not participate, but they're participating. And we came up with, if you don't submit your letters, you get the cost. So if there are eight of you, the cost is not too bad. If there's two of you, the cost is 200 bucks. That's pretty significant, or it'd be 350 in that case. So I, I think I found a pretty motivating factor if I can get it approved by our board. But I think it's the kind of thing you gotta be thinking about to innovate and to promulgate the group and to improve the meeting process. Thank and to you. run it like a business. You know, your company, you run it with structure. And marketing and BNI is to do it 
you run it like all the systems say, you're running it like a company, your company, because it's your business marketing. So please run it like your company. And, I, and I'll back you up on it. If you have to get rid of members, do it in a nice way. Give them plenty of time to change, but then don't hold on. Because they're taking a seat from the people who really want to get in. And I have a seat right now, there's this fourth chapter, this girl can't get in. She's so mad. Like, I've tried three times, I keep missing it. So she called me, she goes, I want to build another one. I said, just not in Tupelo. Because <laughs> that's four t chapters in Tupelo that we'll have. They'll shoot me, you know, so we're going to go outside the limits somewhere along. And she's, she's ready to build another one. She wants to be in on. But you know, if you build a strong group, you got to, you got motivated people who want to be there. So don't hold on to the members who don't come, who show up late, who act bad, who don't care about anything. Don't hold on to them because they're just holding you back, okay? Build your business strong. And then you will have the money in your pocket and you won't waste your time at the meeting. And, uh, and do you guys have membership committee meetings and leadership team meetings? Uh, you want to say something about it? Because some churches don't have membership committee meetings and have no steering committee. So, well, you know, I'm, I alluded to our issue our, that really prompted us to go tighten up this interview process. And everybody on the membership and the leadership team was involved in that process. I mean, we came up with questions. Then we opened it up to the whole membership committee to do those questions. We had to run it back by Janet, because she's the franchise owner, so she needed to approve it. But we got the buy-in so that, you know, a third of the membership is on the membership committee. And so they, they were really guiding us. We also have pulled some of those questions and put them on the back of the thing that the visitors pick up when they come to visit. So, you know, it's already teed up. Another thing I didn't mention is, when we actually do the interview, the first thing I start out with is with the application, right there, the, the original application. And we talk about the questions that they've answered yes, yes, yes to. And it's a way to just conversationally talk about the policies. And then I slip it back to them and I ask them to initial where they've said yes. So it's, it's more like a contract. It's like they can't come back later and say, well, I didn't know this. So we're, we're, we're very congenial. We tell them this interview is all about you. It's not about us. And we really focus on how we can help them grow their businesses. But at the same time, we mean business. And they get it from week to week. You know, we may be cutting up a little bit, but we're going through the traffic lights. And, you know, this week, the only thing that we had in red for the month of May was thank you for closed business. We're only $139,000 I said, why do you think that's red? And several people said, because we didn't turn in thank you for closed business. I said, thank you. Let's, that's the only thing that we're not in the green. So uh, you just, you know, you just have to do the sweet and the salt at the same time. But thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. David, I believe he gets back to the practice. But uh, any last minute questions, thoughts, or something that's going on in your chapter you'd like to brag about? I'd love to hear it. Know exactly what you're doing that the rest of us can learn from in the room. Steve. I would like to say that um, the, the uh, meeting with the new member and going over that, I'm really surprised. Some of the questions I get, I mean, it's it's amazing their perspective on, on what's taken place, and and I have an opportunity to kind of push them in a direction. I tell them, you know. Do the one-on-ones, but start out with the people who can do the most good with you, yeah, rather than just so. going alphabetically through the group. And it's like you know, the light comes on uh, for that person. So um, that's that's been. I think that addition has been a really um, good addition to the BNI. It's always been there. Well, it's just that people haven't done it, but it's it's hugely critical for your new members. They're so overwhelmed when they come in. There's just so much there that they. Somebody doesn't take the time for them. Right. They're lost. Yeah. They're totally lost. Well, I like the I, I like the check sheet. Yay! I did that. Okay. Going through <laughs> that, I mean, because that that's I mean, you could you could spend five hours with somebody, yeah. but uh, that helps you get through in you know, thirty to forty five minutes what needs to be important stuff. So. Right. Anybody else bragging? Whatever. Rick, what's your chapter up to now, money wise? Uh, two point one five. Two point one five. Yeah. Is that is another one that's awesome. It, um, 
being able to keep on their goals. You want to you want to say anything? You guys do a tremendous job as well. We've had uh, good members and some unique business opportunities. Past great referrals to each other. Um, the membership committee's done a real good job of staying on top of uh, interviewing new members. Um, uh, getting the events together for our chapter to do events. Um, Zach's handling that instead of family theater thing in Stone Grove. And uh, great energy in the group. Uh, we have all each other. Uh, our, our meeting this past week actually got moved from a regular spot over to a church's choir room, and several of the members sang their referral. <laughs> it was just interesting. So we have a good time, and we, we're there to uh, make business happen. Yeah, they're very business oriented as well, but they're they're a totally different mix than the Greater Memphis. Totally different, but I mean, they you, you've got that two point. You loved your uh, because you originally surpassed your goal of the. Our goal originally was two point two five million. We're almost there. We we raised it to two point seven five million. We've got about fifteen weeks left to get to that. And you will, I'm sure. So, but it's exciting <coughs> if if you really do BNI the way it's written, it works. Drive and deviate from the plan, it's like you don't know what the results are going to be. And unfortunately, we got a lot of mixed results. That we used to be more in green, guys, way back. And then a whole bunch of chapters got really lax on funding, fun, fundamentals. You don't, you're not doing them. And as a result, we don't have very many, if not any green chapters this month. It's because we're losing track of the fundamentals that make it work. We've got to get back to that. And if you do, you're going to be happier. And it's all about that. It's all about that. Any last minute comments before we don't forget to pay your bill? And nothing else? All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. <laughs>